So Gail decided she had wanted to retire, um, and I had been working with her, and uh, the new owners had come to visit us in Michigan, and I didn't know really what was going on at the time. I had met the Portnoy's, Lewis and Michael, the current owners now. They decided that they really liked what they seen and what we had to offer back in Michigan. Gail was very well known. She owned the company um, in a town called Royal Oak, Michigan for 40 years. And actually Gail started her business in her basement because she liked um, dark rich chocolates. So she started making truffles um, in her basement and then that led to a storefront in Royal Oak. So when she retired and the Portnoy's decided to buy the company, they decided to close our company in Michigan and relocate here to Cottonwood and asked me if I would come with the company. I decided um, I would come and uh, have the opportunity to show my knowledge and to uh, actually just see this end of Arizona, which I think is beautiful. So, kind of make a long story short, I was always into cooking. I loved cooking. They're Gail's husband and my dad are good friends. They'd always come visit, bring chocolates. They were retiring in Sedona. And one thing led to another, I had some money lying around. My parents were, you know, they were down to do this with me. And so we bought it from her. I started doing chocolates um, as a part-time job back in Michigan um, at the age of 15 and have been doing chocolates ever since. It was all chocolates for me. Um, I laughed when I first started working um, at the chocolate company. Mr. Morley, who was the owner, I did not eat chocolates. So that was our big joke. And he's like, Colleen, you can't work here if you don't eat chocolates. So he made me try um, a couple every day. And then he would quiz me on what they taste like. I would go home crying, going, oh my god. But um, I love chocolates now. Um, and after I got through all the chocolates, I've learned that I just love chocolates. And I taste it every day. Um, I have tried um, other part-time jobs doing different things. But chocolate, chocolate is where I really believe I'm meant to be. And uh, I've been lucky. It's brought me to Arizona. And I uh, never thought I would be here um, ever. I always thought I was going to be a Michigander forever. And so with chocolate, it's, it's more of a science than it is cooking, but I still get to work with food. And then Colleen and Gail kind of taught me everything I know. Chocolate is an endless world of fun. This is kind of how it looks when it's done. And then it's gonna be connected like this with pretzels in it, and boom, it's ready to sell for our customers. Back in high school, and I don't know if they do that now, but it's a, a temp job that you get credits for um, in, in high school. So um, a lot of the girls I worked with in high school, we all worked this part-time shift and um, we got credit for it. So we started off with part-time. In the summer, we'd go to full-time. Um, and then back in school, we'd go to part-time. So they supported us through college and all that. I tried different things. I always stuck with the chocolates and um, ended up after school, start full-time. And pretty much they took me under their wings. It really showed me the dynamics of uh, the fundamentals of chocolates. Um, the business end of chocolates, the retail end of chocolates, um, learning how to deliver chocolates, customer service. So they really took me under their wing and really showed me um, the skills that you need for business and um, how to be successful. Because I never went to the culinary school. I wish I went straight from doing produce to working in hotels this. One is a lot more scientific in that you have to get the temperatures right, meaning the chocolate business. You have to get the whole recipe correct. But I know how to read a recipe. If I ever have a question, I have two people I can ask. I just kind of picked up on how to, to do things. So this is kind of where we package up everything and roll our truffles. This is Bernarda. 
She's rolling our truffles right now, so she rolls them, and then when she's done, we hand dip them, and then we decorate them for the store. So, so this is our packaging area. So anything that gets done here either goes out to the store or gets shipped to a customer. This is our walk-in refrigerator that we keep all our truffles, anything that has to be cooled down or in a temperature control, we keep in here. And we keep this temperature runs about 42, anywhere from 40 to 42 degrees at all times. And we check them on the hour, so we make sure our truffles are stayed in a controlled environment. And then back here, as we're walking back to the kitchen, this is where we do all our molding and our dipping of our truffles. Um, this is where all our chocolate is. Underneath here, we have some pink chocolate. Um, which we don't need today. Our colored chocolates back there for different molds that we do. Our orange, green, and our red. Europe is just top of the line for chocolates. Their chocolate's extremely rich. Here, so much um, in Michigan or in Arizona, anywhere in the United States, it seems to be a little bit more milder of a chocolate. What I've learned through my years is um, the different states and their chocolates that they actually enjoy like michigan from my experience is a more of a milk chocolate um, state to where you get here in arizona it's a dark chocolate state um, maryland i know is a dark chocolate state so that's been fun for me to learn these states and and just how they consume their chocolates i would say the chocolates here in the states seems to be in our chocolate it's a little bit more milder of a chocolate it's a rich chocolate, but it's not that high, you know, to where you're at, like a 75. So like the dark chocolate, your bitterness will depend on how heavy that chocolate is. You know, we do a very mild, but I know over in Europe, they use a very strong um, chocolate to where that bitterness is going to be that high, dense bitterness. And that's what they enjoy. Us here in the United States seems to like it a little bit more milder. And then back here is where we run our dark chocolate, our milk chocolate, and our white chocolate. Um, after all the chocolate's tempered, this is where we mold. Like right now, I'm working on our cupcake pinata for birthdays. I'll be decorating this and showing you guys in a little bit. But so everything that you see out in the store or anything we ship out gets made right here. Tempering chocolate is important and it gets it that crisp um if your chocolate is crisp and shiny it's tempered good if it's not tempered good it's going to be very dull and very crumbly discolor it's just not attractive at all so when you're tempering i'm lucky i have this machine here that we run our dark and our milk this is a self tempering machine so i don't have to temper it i click it on in the morning and it tempers itself years ago you didn't have to these things so you had to self temper our white chocolate here I have to self temper every day so what we do is at night we temper it well we keep the heat about 100 degrees in the morning I come in I drop it down to 80 and I put cold um, little beads in there like this of white chocolate in the back and then I pour the warm chocolate onto it to cool it off and then after it cools off then i turn it up to about 85 86 degrees and i know i can run it at that and it's temper so temper and chocolate you want to keep it warm cool it quick and then keep it to a regular temperature anywhere from 85 to 86 degrees um, we do tests on the chocolate to make sure it stays in tempering and even sometimes with these i do they get sensitive but I usually, if the chocolate comes out shiny, like this, this is a good temper. It's not shiny, it's not a good temper. What I try to teach people is tempering chocolate is the most important thing, because it's how your chocolate looks and how it tastes. You don't want it to be all, um, I want to say sugary, but it's like crumbly. You don't want it to be crumbly. So even if you're at home, tempering chocolate to make something at home, you can easily do it. You just heat up your chocolate and you always put pieces of cold chocolate in it and mix it. 
And then once you do that and you get that crisp, and you can always test it. If it crunches and it breaks hard, it's a good temper. And when it's shiny, it's a good temper. But it's easy to do, but you have to learn that process of getting it tempered. I like to run our chocolate if it's at room temperature and I can touch it and it's a little cold, but not too cold, you know it's tempered. It could be a day from just working in the store to cleaning the store. If I have free time, I'll mop back here. Um, and then if I have stuff to cook, I mean, I'm back here cooking. I'm usually back here three days on the busy season, like every day for, pro for probably about four hours. I, I always wanted to do classes just so people aren't afraid of tempering chocolate. Um, but it is just taking your time. It's nothing quick. If you're heating up chocolate over at the oven, you want to click it off, add your, we call it seed, but it's just little chips of chocolate. And if you're mixing it in and it melts down and it cools it down, once you cool that chocolate down, you should have a perfect temper. Over a cut, over, you know, open flame. I mean, that's how years ago, a lot of tempering was done. These machines have been pretty much around as long as I've been doing chocolates. This is how we've tempered, and that was a long time ago. But they have little heaters in back, and that controls with the dial here of whether I'm gonna run it. But at night, I keep it at 100 because you don't want it to be hard and then have to remelt it. And then once you turn it down, but these are, this is an easy tempering machine, but you have to constantly watch it throughout the day. With these, now these have been around for quite a while now. I always call them like the Mercedes bins of chocolate because um, it's really made the chocolate world so much easier. You know, and it's just maintaining them and making sure that um, you're keeping them clean and keeping them um, dust free and stuff. But pretty much, once you get your temperature set up, it, is, it does make chocolate world. Most chocolate companies have these now. Um, the smaller ones, I mean, Gail, we had one back in Michigan when we were in Michigan. Well, we had two. Um, you know, you just have to, it makes life so much easier in training. Trying to train some people to get afraid of doing this. Other than, I like the old school, I like that challenge to make sure I get a good temper. So, um, that's always fun. Because I'm constantly filling it. Um, so it's not like we keep it in here a long time. We're constantly doing orders. Chocolate itself can last a very long time, just as long as it's not mixed with any ingredients. But a block of chocolate can last for years. Just as long as it's not melted, it's kept in good, you know, a good environment. Um, if chocolate melts and then reforms, it kind of loses its tempering. So then it's not really always as good. But um, chocolate can last, it's, it's the ingredients. Like a truffle, a truffle will only last a couple months if it's kept in our walk-in, but once you take it home, it's only good for a couple weeks. So a piece of plain chocolate can last for a long, long time, years, if they had to. But I don't know of any company that really keeps chocolate that long. You know, we go through chocolate every couple months. I have the big melters here. This is our milk chocolate. So I take the milk chocolate from here and then that's what I dump in there. This is a hot, this is about 110 degrees. So it keeps it mixing and I put the cold blocks in here, but I take it out of the pump and then I flow into here. And it's a constant mix. So, you know, if this, if this ever went down, I would just have to take some of this and dump it into one of our little machines to do it, so. We're gonna make uh, semi-sweet truffles. This is the, how Gail started her business was with truffles, actually.
All right, so that's two pounds of butter. So this is basically like baking sugar. Okay, so we need a cup of this. This is antioxidant, so this is, you know, our preservative. It's rosemary oil. All right, and that's it for now. Now we have to wait um, about 10, 15 minutes for the uh, cream to boil, and then we'll add the chocolate. Back in Michigan at 15, we didn't even have to wear hair nets or gloves. So that, that was a major thing. I remember um, when the health department finally was kind of becoming something, and they came in and made us wear hair nets and gloves, and we all fought it. We're like, we can't wear it, we can't feel the chocolate, you know? Um, Back in those days, even hand dipping, we had um, slabs of um, porcelain, well, not porcelain, it was almost, gosh, I can't even think of what it's called now, but we tempered our chocolate just in like a bowl. You know, we didn't have any of our electrical machines like this. A lot of it was in big drums and you'd put it in and you'd cool it almost just by your regulated air with a spatula. Um, we did a lot of hand dipping Nowadays, there's more machineries. That's what makes scale so unique, is we still are hands-on. Most companies now are all machineries that do the chocolate for you, the tempering, the molding. Um, that's why I've always, that's why I appreciate Gales, is because we still hand dip all of our truffles. And when we're doing our molds, we're not doing it with machine, we're doing it everything we make pretty much by hand, and that does make us different. So, tempering um, our hair nets to um, our gloves, um, and then as that's trans, you know, inspired, you still have the old ways of doing some of the things. You know, we still use our stove in our copper kettles. Copper kettles was a way, and that's been used as long as I've known it. Um, we used to do it over flames. We didn't have stoves. Back then, we did it over gas, um, like a big gas stove. But um, so back then, a lot of those techniques were used and kind of still are. The tempering has always been the same. You should start off warm, you cool it off, and then you get it to your temperature you need to run it. But as time changes, you get a machine close to a Selmi that we use for our, our molding, and that is a self-tempering machine. The one thing, even when you have machines, you still have to have that knowledge of self-tempering um, because there are days, especially being here in Arizona, and we had this back in Michigan, on your weather and the building that you were in, all that affects your chocolates. So even back in Michigan, when it when we were in rainy season, that moisture, moisture and chocolate's terrible. So on those days, you had to run your chocolate either colder or a little bit warmer. But even with these, those do not work every day. You still have to know that basic of how to temper, and you still have to understand the mechanical end of this. I'm not one, I can't change the battery in my car, but when you get me under this machine, you learn how to do it and you understand what the numbers mean and when something goes wrong and how to fix it. But there's little chunks of chocolate left over still and that's basically what I'm waiting on to basically finish melting all this. Now not every piece is going to go away. I do end up sifting the uh, chocolate so there's no crunchy pieces but there always is, just by the, the shape of this. But yeah, that's what, uh, there you go, see? That's what uh, I'm doing now. And then another, I don't know, 10 minutes at most, they'll be done, and then we'll pour them into these high quality wooden boxes. And then, they get wrapped up and sent over to Bernarda or my mom, because they're the two that roll truffles. And 
and uh, get rolling on them. My favorite product to make, that's a hard one um, because I get to do so many different, um, I make different things every day. So really, it depends on what kind of mood I'm in. Um, Usually I like to do things that I like to eat. So if it's damaged, I get to eat it. So, um, but I like doing um, the holidays. I love Easter. I love doing our Easter molds because they're very colorful. Um, and I love watching the consumers come into our store and they just fall in love with them. And I think that's the most important thing. I, I guess it's not one, because I love it when I get to wait on a customer and they're walking into our store for the first time and they're just like, oh my gosh. And that to me, that's success. And that's a great accomplishment because I know what our team is making is good. You know, and when they come back, then you know you're really good because they come back. And that's the key to any business is you, yeah, it's nice when they come in one time but you want them to come back. And when they come back, then that you just know you're doing something good. So to answer your question, I don't have one. I have multiple, um, but Easter is probably my favorite holiday. Um, and I like um, coming up with new ideas too, like even our cupcake pinata, um, and coming up with just different techniques of doing different things. Around 25% of the business is um, the internet. During the summer months, this is, this is actually going to be our first summer. So we've been here in this location. It'll be technically May 1st because that's when we started moving things in and getting set up. But June 1st is our first like hard opening date. So June 1st will be three, three years. So this is like the first real summer where we'll see what summer's like. Our goal is to get a place maybe down in Scottsdale or Sedona somewhere where it's just a retail store. We want a place with foot traffic. Because you're when we're busy, we're, we're always on deadlines because there's so many businesses we have to get stuff out to. It's just, it's a very hectic time. Summertime, completely different. It's time we get to take vacation take time off, you know. This place is going to grow. Gales is known for doing piñatas. So our new piñata is our cupcake piñata, which this one's in dark chocolate. So I'm gonna show you guys kind of how I decorate it. I get some white chocolate. So when you're decorating anything, chocolate and water are not good together. But for this specific thing is because I want it to set up good. I'll add just a tad bit of water to it and it just sets it up so it doesn't leak all over and it stays where I want it to stay. So just a little bit and then I mix it good. So when I'm decorating, I usually use a piping bag. So piping bag and we have cute little utensils. So baking, it's the same thing as if you're decorating a cupcake or a cake, um, same concept when it's at a good um, textures, when it's a little bit stiff and it holds its form, but not too stiff that you can't, um, that it doesn't come out of the piping bag. So you still want it loose, but yet you want it a little firm. But mixing the water in with it does firm it up, but you want to make sure you mix in the water very well with it. And that's just one of those little tricks of the trade. We do the same process as when we're decorating our truffles too. So I pretty much pour it in. One of the fun things about decorating is there's no right or wrong. And that's what I like about this is it's usually when I'm training someone on how to decorate, use your imagination and have fun with it. Um, when we're doing any of our pinatas or our, even our truffles and we have standard decorations, but they're not all going to be the same. Everyone decorates different and has their own um, sense of creativity. Um, I don't have much creativity, but you just learn how to have fun. And that's, that's why I like my job. So basically, I'm gonna start at the top and work myself down. And I stop every once in a while and sprinkle sprinkles on it. And I just, and I'm kind of making little stars 
that's kind of the mood I was in today. And then I just kind of stop halfway between, and then I take my sprinkles. And I do that, so then I do it before the chocolate hardens. And then I can just keep on going. I have it on a little spinny stool there, so it helps spin it around. I always tell when I'm training people on doing chocolates, having, it doesn't always have to be perfect because it shows the creativity of the chocolates. And people seem to appreciate that. So if there's a little piece of chocolate running down, it's kind of okay. People don't seem to mind that. They like that there's been a lot of love put into the chocolate and making of it. So with these piñatas, when I'm done decorating them, I fill them with our dark chocolate pretzels. And then I connect the lid to the bottom of the cupcake. And then so when you get it as a present, you crack it open and it's all edible. So that's kind of the fun thing of our piñatas is that you can eat it all. Nothing goes to waste. And another thing on these, Usually you can do different colors on piñatas. I did, um, we could do birthdays, and if a little girl likes specific colors with chocolate, you can pretty much make any color you want. And that's another fun thing about chocolate, is you add um, some cocoa butter on it, which is a colored cocoa butter, and you can make any color you want. Actually, white chocolate is not really considered chocolate. It's like a cocoa butter like from the part of the seed of the chocolate. But dark and milk chocolate, those two kind of run about the same, um, same texture, same temperatures. Um, when you're dealing with the white chocolate, the fun thing, because it's not chocolate, it's more cocoa butter, you can run it even hotter. Sometimes when I'm um, decorating, I like it running a little bit warm, um, so it flows a little bit better. But then sometimes when I'm doing a very technical mold. I like it a little bit thicker because it holds. So the white chocolate to me is one of the easiest, much easier to work with. Um, but again, after you, that's after you get it tempered. You still have to start off tempering it, uh, starting it warm, getting it cold, and then getting it to a temperature about 85. But So that's the difference. So when you're dealing with colored chocolate, the colored chocolate's always used with the white chocolate. So that's fun because it's not as uh, temperamental as what you would on your dark and your milk chocolate. So for anyone, I love when people want to play with chocolate and get into anything culinary. I mean, because it's such a creative, um, a, it's a good way to express yourself. Plus the knowledge that you have when you're learning something like that. I always tell customers when they come in and they're curious and they want to do something for a lunch, you know, make something. Play with chocolate and in your kitchen, it's easy. It, it looks hard and complicated, but everyone can do it. And that's what I want people, when people want that knowledge, I want to give it to them. I'm like, you want me to come over and show you how to do it over a pan or in a microwave? I'll be there because that's the fun of it is people learning to create their own vision of what they want their chocolate to be. So anyone that wants to get into that field, there's just that opportunity of just that knowledge and being creative. And you don't even have to be creative. That comes with just that knowledge of chocolate or anything you're doing, even if it's desserts. I am not creative at all, but when you're in your zone of doing something, you're just doing it how you feel, and it seems to come out really good. And then you have that good feeling. So anyone that wants to get into it, come and see me at Gail's. I'd be more than happy to show you, have you come here, I'll walk you through what I do and let you play with it. The chocolate's great to have, and um, I just always tell people, don't be afraid of it. It really all depends on what you want it to do. If you want to be a, if you just want to get into cooking, if you have a passion for that, and you just want to work in a restaurant, culinary school for sure. Pretty much since we moved here, I've been doing my interns with the owners, Louis, Michael, and Andrea, and any of the few employees that we've had here. So that's taken up a lot of my time. But I would not, um, 
I would not turn down anyone that would want to learn something that was serious about it. I would find and somehow to show them and to teach them the basic skills of chocolates.